Hi, in this video we're going to look at some properties of quadratics. In fact, um, I'm going to do some things about quadratics in general, so perhaps I should uh, call this video something like Advanced uh, Quadratics. Please do not watch this video right now if it's the first time you've ever come across one of these. I've got loads of other videos that introduce them. Come back to this once you're a little bit familiar. But we're going to look at them in general. Okay, so we're used to having quadratics with uh, numbers in them. You've used the equation, completing the square, factorizing, I'm going to assume, and we're going to uh, use all of those techniques to talk about this uh, quadratic in, in general. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to do, because it's the most informative uh, way to view a quadratic, is to complete the square. Um, and this is, might look a little bit strange if you've never done something like this before, but I'm going to take uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm going to complete the square on it in general. Okay, So I'm going to try and almost like find a formula from going from these coefficients to the ones in completed square form. Uh, so I'll call those uh, capital A, capital B, and capital C. Right. So given these numbers, I want to be able to work out these ones. Right. And I'll use the method that I've used in my uh, very recent video on um, completing the square here, which is to multiply out what I've got on the right-hand side here to get uh, A times x squared plus 2bx plus b squared plus c, which is ax squared plus 2 abx plus ab squared plus c, and we'll now equate the coefficients. Okay, so clearly I can see that I need to just choose my capital A here uh, to be equal to, to a little, little a. Remember, we're thinking that we know this one and we want to find this one. Uh, if I look at the next term here, the bx and the 2abx, so this gives us that 2ab has to be equal to a little b. But capital A is this the same as small a, so I've got 2a capital B equals small b, so that means I could take my capital B to be b divided by 2a. Uh, so I've got uh, two of them uh, that I've worked out, and then finally I could look at c and equate that to ab squared plus c in capitals. Uh, so I've got that c has to be equal to capital A capital B squared plus capital C, but I know uh, these two, so this is a and this is b over 2 uh, a all squared, right? So my capital C is going to be c minus this fraction here, and uh, let's multiply it out. So b squared over 4 a squared, but then that cancels with one with one one a here, so I get b squared over over 4 a. Okay. So what I what I've shown here then is that this quadratic uh, here is the same thing, it's identically equal to um, this completed square form a times uh, x plus b, so x plus b divided by 2a uh, all squared uh, plus c minus b squared over 4a. Okay, so these are all small letters now. Right, so given this quadratic I can always write it in this completed square form. And in some ways this is, tells us more or less everything we need to know uh, uh, about, about quadratics. Completed square form is very powerful. Um, in particular, notice that if I've got my uh, quadratic to start off with and I think of it as an equation, it, it allows us immediately to derive the uh, quadratic formula in our usual way. So if I write my quadratic instead of in this form, uh, in this completed square form, okay. Well, I could now uh, move these so this constant term to the right hand side and get a x plus b over two a squared equals b squared over four a minus c. I can divide by a and get uh, x plus b over two a squared is b squared over four a squared uh, minus. Uh, c, uh, c over a, and uh, I could take the right hand side here and combine it into a single fraction, so b squared minus 4ac, and let's write the bottom 4a squared as 2a all squared. Um, so I've got x plus b over 2a squared is equal to all of this. If I take the square root of both sides, or, or really I'm finding the values of x that satisfy this equation, so I do here uh, get plus or minus the square root, so I have x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b 
squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, and finally subtract out of b over 2a from both sides and combine it into a single fraction, and that gives me x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, uh, all, all divided by 2a. Okay, so uh, if I've got uh, the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, that gives me uh, the usual uh, quadratic formula. Right, so, uh, so this completed square form has turned out to be uh, very nice. And let's just use this then to have a look at the graph of a, of, of a quadratic. Okay, so in general, um, so let's have some, some axes. Now, of course, I, I can't draw it in general in, in every case because, I mean, uh, yeah, depending on where it crosses the axes and things, so I'm just going to draw uh, one, particular, one, one rough quadratic here uh, and we will uh, look at it, some general properties. In particular, first thing you notice here is I've drawn this for the case where uh, a is greater than zero. If a was less than zero, we'd have a quadratic the other way up, of course. Um, so let's have a look at uh, some uh, axis crossing points, right? So firstly, well, the y-axis crossing point is the easiest one. If I put in x equals zero, I just get zero plus zero. Uh, so, so this should be, uh, I, should, I should say somewhere here, I suppose, that I'm, I'm now thinking of a graph. So um, uh, let's put this somewhere where it's not uh, in the way. Oh, uh, looks like someone's commented on one of my other videos whilst I've been uh, watching this one, uh, whilst I'm making this one. So uh, so this is the graph of y equals uh, ax squared plus uh, bx uh, plus c. So it crosses the y-axis here, just when x equals 0, I get y equals c. Uh, now, other crossing points then, well, these two are the roots. Right? Now, um, so in particular, they're the x values given by these two things here. So I could um, I could use a little bit of notation here and actually write uh, that here, you know, these solutions x are minus b plus or minus uh, well, what should I say? Let's just say delta over 2a, where I could define delta to be this whole thing. Actually, I think usually delta for the discriminant, we would just write it as b squared minus 4ac. So perhaps I should, yeah, why don't I just write root delta here to be to be good with the notation. So this uh, value here is going to be the smaller of the two, which is going to be minus b minus the square root of delta over 2a. And this one here is going to be minus b plus the square root of delta over 2a. Okay. Um, so that's quite nice. Uh, what else can we say? Well, we've got this uh, turning point uh, down here, which is always going to be here. And uh, if we look at the completed square form, uh, if you know about the completed square, you can read off the turning point of the quadratic by looking at uh, the value that makes this, the x value that makes this part zero, uh, because this is something squared, so this part's always going to be greater than or equal to zero, so the minimum value here will be uh, this part of the completed square form, and it'll happen at x equals uh, minus b over uh, 2a here. Okay, so I've got uh, minus b over 2a, and uh, the y coordinate here is c minus b squared over 4a. That's something we could just know in general. And the other thing we get from this is that this line here, okay, which is the line x equals minus b over 2a, is a line of symmetry for the quadratic. And again, you can deduce that from the completed square form if you think about uh, taking the value that makes this zero and either increasing x by a certain amount or decreasing it by the same amount, then I will have plus or minus a number. So either way, it'll be the same thing squared that gets added on. So we get this neat symmetry moving away from this point. And in fact, if you think about the two roots of the uh, of, of the uh, quadratic equation here, you know you can see that this point here is exactly halfway between these two. Right? If I add together uh, uh, if I add together those two roots, okay, minus b plus the square root of delta over 2a, 
and minus b minus the square root of delta over 2a. Um, then uh, divide them by 2. So I'm averaging the two values, averaging these two points. Well, I've got a plus root delta over 2a and minus root delta over 2a, so they cancel out. So I've got minus 2b over 2a uh, all over 2. Okay, so I just end up with well, the twos here cancel, but then the two comes back in, so I just end up with uh, minus b uh, over two a, which is the you know the x coordinate uh, of this turning point here. Okay, so um, said a lot of things here about quadratics in general, and you know especially if you're studying a level at the moment, this might be a, a, a different way uh, of of looking at quadratics. If you're doing further maths, if you're looking at step and challenge papers and all of that sort of stuff. Um, you know, this is a, a, a way that we can often analyze mathematical problems. And as you do more maths, uh, this sort of logic uh, becomes more the sort of thing that you do, where we look at forms in general, we try to deduce properties of them, uh, rather than solving uh, individual quadratics. In a sense, I've said a lot of things here that are true for all quadratics. If you want to apply them to individual quadratics, of course you can, but we've also developed a little bit of theory uh, that is applicable in general. So I hope that was useful. Uh, please like and subscribe to the videos uh, if it was and uh, watch out for some more.